saxophone, clarinet, and a right half music for past sounds. My name's Phil Robson, play guitar, and I write the other half of the music for Partisans. It was originally the name of a tune. Uh, it, was a, it was a tune that was written for my partner, Christine Tobin. She actually wrote lyrics for it. So that was the origin of the tune, and then we ended up playing it with this band as an instrumental. And, uh, it seemed to be a kind of fairly strong tune, so we called the first album after that. And then, strangely, in the press and the media, the, uh, they started to refer to the band as Partisans. So it was never an actual choice, really, to call the band Partisans, but it just kind of happened organically. Oh, wow. And uh, it was strange. People kept saying, oh, the next Partisans gig, or when a Partisans playing or something. It's nice, because it's so got a we, party we just about it, hasn't it? Yeah, that's one, one way of looking at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, tricky. Oh, it's tr tricky, tricky, tricky yeah. sound. Uh, well, the best thing is to come to a gig and check it out, or get one of the records and check it out. It's a real mixture, real eclectic mixture of all sorts of things. But, you know, there's a lot of improvisation, but there's a lot of grooves, it's very melodic. Um, and it's quite a big sound for Port Four people. It's like a lot of sound, and uh, it's hard to explain it. Hard to stick it in a box, but it's a real mixture of influences and different exactly. things. Well, it's funny because uh, Phil and I aren't from too far from here. I'm from Nottingham. Phil's from Derby, so we both um, lived in London and we're on the scene trying to trying to get established on, on the scene. And I met Phil, and it's like. Immediately we hit it off because of you know the local connection. So uh, just on the scene and we started playing together and uh, we then at one point shared a house with a couple of other musicians, a very kind of unhygienic jazz house and um, jazz monastery. Jazz monastery, mm. practicing all day. And then um, was it that by choice, the monastery the bit? <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we had very tolerant neighbours. Or was neighbors, it some raw scenario? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would have been cool. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's crazy. We we had very understanding neighbours because we basically had a full band in the house, and uh, we used to play pretty much all day. But really. it was crazy. It lasted for one year, but it was a good year. Yeah. Well, my first influence was uh, being around my my uh, mum and dad listening to jazz. And, and your mum was know, at the gig, weren't she? My mum was at the gig. It was great <laughs> to see her. Um, my dad was a, a singer and his former like before he came to England but um, he uh, they're both complete ja uh, Count Basie and Duke Ellington and mm -hmm. Eddie Davis and Ben Webster I grew up listening to all those great tenor players and then um, so I had all that record collection to listen to and then my first jazz album was uh, actually I think um, it was either the real McCoy McCoy Tyner or there was a double album of John Coltrane Paul Chambers which was really uh, my, my own first record that I had bought myself with my own money. Mine was a Jackson 5. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, it's just Mine was Black Sabbath, the I'm, first one I ever bought. <laughs> and What a Waste by Enduring, it's the first <coughs> single. I've Actually, the first yeah. record I ever bought was Lena Zavaroni, Ma, He's Making Eyes at Me, but I was five years old, so... Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess it wasn't, oh, yeah, we did say jazz album, It wasn't really my we? own yeah. money, I yeah, suppose, yeah. you know. But the first jazz album for me, oh, there was a few, but the one that really got me hooked was Mars Davis Live in Antibes. And it was part of my dad's record collection, which I raided. But my dad was a clarinet player, a semi-pro, but very good clarinet player, who loved uh, Benny Goodman and all the big band stuff and Artie Shaw, all that kind of stuff. And he was a big fan of Billie Holiday. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he was he was playing a lot, and so I just gradually got interested. Barney Kessel was another one, one of the first ones I got into. Yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I think uh, well, I think about the Dave Brubeck thing. I heard him say when asked the same question about what, giving advice to young musicians, and he said uh, anybody wanting to be a professional musician, you've got to love it. Basically, first and foremost, you've got to love the music. Because um, that's it, you know, everything 
uh, makes makes sense if you do, you know, because yeah. it's it's n not the sometimes not the easiest path to chosen, you know, and uh, so if, if you've got a love of the music that's at the heart of that, then it's going to make a lot more sense. Mm. As opposed to maybe wanting the name or the fame or the yeah the glory. Yeah, glory still waiting for the glory. <laughs> yeah, you might have to wait for that one. <laughs> no, it's, yeah. you know, we've been fortunate both for since we, since we met, you know, to have had a Mm. We've um, been able to play professionally for, for, for um, you know, somehow survive as musicians for this long. You know, it's been it's great fun. It's it's always a challenge. It's fantastic fun. Mm. But you got to love it. Mm. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, also, I'd say check out the history of the music. It's really important. It's, it's <laughs> such a it's such a massive history of music now, and it it's so broad. Uh, but it's a great thing to have a sense of, I think, as a musician, you know, stuff that's gone before mm. and how it came about is really important as yeah. well, I think. So that's Contextualising. Yeah. Yeah, that was the, where we, he had uh, the question, how important is the, mentor, the music education mentoring jazz history? <laughs> so, oh, right. Very important. Okay. So, yeah, um, we, is there anything you wanted to share, like any upcoming projects or anything that you would like to give out on there. Yeah. Well we're just playing, it's been great fun playing with, with this band. Yeah. We've done a lot of gigs this year actually, we've been travelling a lot, we went to the States and Canada and um, we just came back from Finland and, um, and we're on tour in UK and it's, it's great fun because we've got, we've got a set of new music we recorded on the album Swan, which just just come out and it's Every time we play a gig, it's something different happens. It's, it's changing the arrangements. The arrangements are changing on the gig, and it's really feels really fresh. And so it's a really nice place mm. to be. So there's, quite, there's a few more gigs. If you check our website, yeah, um, partisans.org.uk. It's all up there, and we've also got Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff that people do these days. But um, yeah, come and check out the band because mm. it's you know it's easier, to, it's better to listen to it than talk about it. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> or talking about it. This band is called Partisans. This is Phil Robson. Julian Siegel. You're watching Leicester Jazz House TV.